Hey guys, this is the Dawn with Overlanding Anglers and welcome back to the channel. Today we are starting bright and early filming Exploring Oklahoma episode 8 and we are going to the most toxic town in the United States, Pitcher, Oklahoma. So let's go. In 1913, lead and zinc ore were discovered on Henry Crawfish's land. Mining leases were quickly signed with the Eagle Pitcher Mining Company, who began large-scale mining operations. This made Henry one of the wealthiest men in the Quapaw tribe. A town site sprang up quickly and was named Pitcher in honor of the original mining owner. The town of Pitcher was incorporated in 1918 and reached its peak population by 1926. Pitcher's story is not just important to Oklahoma, but also important to our nation. The Pitcher District produced 1.5 million metric tons of lead and 8 million metric tons of zinc, with a combined worth of $20 billion. Half of the lead and zinc used during World War I and World War II came from right here in Pitcher, Oklahoma. Mining continued up until 1967 when the water pumps were finally shut off, causing the mine shafts to fill with water. This contaminated the groundwater. 54 years of mining also left the town significantly undermined, causing sinkholes to start opening up all over town. As we got into picture, another consequence of the mine became very apparent. As we arrived in picture, we found mountains of sand. But this is not just sand. It's over 100 million tons of mine tailings called chat. These chat piles are all over Pitcher and contain lead, zinc, and cadmium. This contamination led to the town's demise. In 1983, it was named part of the Tar Creek Superfund site. And in 1994, blood tests found that 34% of all children suffered from lead poisoning. In 2006, the federal government decided to close Pitcher, but a lot of the residents stayed. In 2008, though, an EF4 tornado struck the town, killing eight and seriously damaging 20 blocks. This made it very hard for people to stay. And in 2009, the town was officially dissolved. Sadly, what was once a family-filled community is now just an eerie ghost town. A majority of the town's buildings were either demolished or became victims of arson. A tragic end for a town that played such an important part in our nation's history. But we found one of the few buildings still standing. So let's take a closer look. All right, guys, here we are at the Pitcher and Cardine High School. This is actually the field house, but it is a pretty big complex of buildings. This school was opened in the early 1900s and ran even after they discovered the toxic effect that the mine chat was having until 2009 when the last class graduated. Right now, it is kind of run by the Bureau of Indian Affairs and they are out here cleaning up this mine chat, hopefully making this building and this town livable again. Check it out. Unfortunately, there's not much left to see here in Pitcher. This community killed itself for our nation, and I have nothing but gratitude for this small ghost town in northeastern Oklahoma. But it's time to hit the road to find our next stop. Stop on Exploring Oklahoma episode eight. Kind of a cool place that was referred to us as we were here. This is the point where Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri meet. This spot was actually found in 1857 by astronomers. In 1830, this was built. This was built by the auxiliary youth, but they kind of did some more research and found that the actual point is over there. Let's check it out. This new marker was placed in 2004 by the Missouri Association of County Surveyors. Before we move on, now is a good time to go over our convoy for this trip. There's me, two friends from work, and a new friend we met today, all in Toyotas. We also have our friends from Custom Off-Road Equipment in their built Gladiator that's also for sale. For now though, let's get back on the road.
Now, since we're three and a half hours away from home, we decided to find a place to do some off-roading on our way back. We reached out to our friend Jeff from Badak Adventure Co. and he recommended the Whitewater Off-Road Vehicle Area at Keystone Lake. He even told us he'd meet us there to show us around. Keystone Lake was formed in 1957 with the construction of a hydroelectric dam on the Arkansas River. It was authorized by the same Flood Control Act that formed Broken Bow Lake. The communities of Keystone, Manford, Crewe, and Appalachia Bay all had to be relocated as the lake grew. The lake features fishing, boating, and camping, but we were more interested in the Whitewater Off-Road Vehicle Area. The Whitewater Off-Road Vehicle Area is an 80-acre park just to the east of the dam and is free to access for anyone interested. It has been really dry in Oklahoma lately, so the surface was mostly deep and coarse river sand, which led to some complications. As you can see, our new friend was struggling in his Tacoma. Turns out his Tacoma is only two wheel drive. We're not knocking two wheel drive because they do make some very capable rigs, but on thick sand with new mud terrains, they just don't do very well. The FJ stepped up for the rescue, but got wounded in the process. So the Gladiator stepped in to save the day. Jeff also opened up his shop at Badak Adventure Code to help with repairs because there was some carnage. You know, aside from some obvious setbacks at the end, this has been an awesome adventure. We've discovered some awesome history, saw some cool sights, and made some new friends. Overall, pretty decent trip. Well, all right guys, as you can see, we did have some issues. Some really deep and thick sand caused one of our vehicles to get stuck. One of the tow vehicles we were using also snapped a front CV axle during the process of trying to get out that first vehicle. So that's gonna be an early day for us. But I do hope that you really enjoyed this video. And if you do, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell to make sure that you get notified every time there's a new video. If you wanna visit Pincher, Oklahoma, it is gonna be right here. If you wanna visit the uh, tri-state area, it's gonna be located right here. And if you wanna visit this off-road park, I do recommend airing down first, it is right here. As always, guys, I hope you have a great day. Get out there. Keep exploring. We'll catch you next time. Bye.